we're going to look at some more complicated examples where we're factorising by taking out a common factor. If we're asked to factorise something like this, our first step is to find the highest common factor of these two terms. So, let's start with the 8 and the 12. What's the biggest number that divides into 8 and also into 12? Well, that's 4. Then we look at the a's. Here you've got an a squared, here an a to the 6, so you need an a squared in the highest common factor. Here you've got a b cubed and a b, so you're just going to have a b in the highest common factor. And then here you've got a c, but here you've got no c's, so you can't put any c's in the highest common factor, because then it won't divide into this term. Now we just need to figure out what goes in this bracket. This multiplied by this must get me to 8a squared b cubed. Well, 4 times 2 gets me to 8. a squared times what to get me to a squared? Well, it's just going to be a squared multiplied by 1. But we don't need to actually write the 1 in there because 2 times 1 just gives me 2. And then b multiplied by b squared will get me to b cubed. We then look at c4 times positive 3 will get us to plus 12 and then a squared multiplied by a to the 4 will get us to a to the 6 b multiplied by it's just a 1 you need to multiply it by to get to b and we don't need to write down the 1 we can if we want to but 3a to the 4 multiplied by 1 is still just 3a to the 4 and then we need to put in the c Remember when you're doing these, it's also a very worthwhile effort once you've factorised, just to quickly check by multiplying out that you do get back to this. So you just do a little quick check in your head um, by multiplying out. Okay, let's have a look at this one, where we're asked to factorise this. Now in this case, actually, we can make a choice when we look at what's the highest common factor of negative 5 and 10. We could say that it is just 5, or we could say it's negative 5, and you can choose either of those. So for now, I'm going to actually choose negative 5. Then of x squared and x cubed, it's x squared. y to the 5 and y to the 7, it's y to the 5. Now I need to go ahead and work out what goes in the bracket. Well, it's negative 5 multiplied by what gets me to negative 5? Well, that's just a 1. And in this case, I am going to write down the 1 because I've got nothing else there. And so it's not like in this case where I had, you know, uh, 1 times 2 just got me to 2, so I didn't need to write in the 1. So let me put that 1 in. x squared multiplied by 1 gets me to x squared. But 1 times 1 is just 1, so I don't need to put another 1 in. And y to the 5 multiplied by 1 gets me to y to the 5. So again, I need another 1, but I don't need to write it down because 1 times 1 is still just 1. Now here, what, negative 5 multiplied by what gets me to positive 10? Well, it's got to be a negative 2 to get me to positive 10. And then x squared multiplied by x will get me to x cubed and y to the 5 multiplied by y squared will get me to y to the 7. And there's my answer. Now, as I said, I could also have chosen, and it would be equally right, 5x squared y to the 5 as my highest common factor. And so then what would I get? Well, I'm asking myself, this multiplied by this must get me back here. So 5 multiplied by minus 1 is what gets me back to minus 5. x squared multiplied by 1 gets me to x squared, and I don't need to write that down because minus 1 times 1 is just minus 1. And y to the 5 multiplied by 1 gets me to y to the 5. So I don't need to write that 1 down because minus 1 times 1 is just 1. And then if I look at the next, this multiplied by this must get me to that. So 5 multiplied by what gets me to 10? It's just going to be 5 multiplied by positive 2. And then x squared needs to be multiplied by x and y to the 5 by y squared. And this should make sense. You've basically got the same thing here, but with the signs reversed 
And that makes sense, because the only thing that changed from here to here was the signs.